Live from the Walt Disney World Resort in Lake Buena Vista, Florida, it's the Home Depot 1999 College Football Awards. Disney's Wide World of Sports Complex is a 200-acre state-of-the-art facility that features spectacular venues, fields, and diamonds that can host more than 30 sports. The main venue is the baseball stadium, which is the spring training home of the Atlanta Braves. Ladies and gentlemen, here again are Chris Fowler and Lee Corso. Time now for the All-American defense. You think defense isn't important? Top five teams in scoring defense, combined record 53 and 4. Let's meet the disruptors, the playmakers, the destroyers who won the Burger King AFCA 1999 All-American defense. Going down. Harrington causes a fumble, scoops it, touchdown. Folks, if you have not seen Corey Moore play, you are in for a three. Seminole blitzes at the right hand. And a fumble! Seminole again! You gotta like that face makeup, buddy. He's got the war paint on. And it is intercepted. It is Delta O'Neill who has the ball, and he is into the end zone. Harold Carter making another tackle in the backfield. Tipped by Courtney Brown and intercepted. Touchdown, Courtney Brown. What an individual play. Bays gets a foot into it. <laughs> Brian Erlacher, there's no negative talk about the way he plays football. Pass is tipped and it's intercepted. Raynott tops it up the sideline. That ball is intercepted, and there he is. Corey Simon. Folks, please join us in saluting the 1989 Burger King Coaches All-America Defense. You know, too often, large tragedies touched our little corner of college football, but so often, folks in this sport showed courage, perseverance, and resilience, and that's the essence of of the fourth annual Disney Spirit Award, which honors an individual or team whose inner strength and humanity have inspired us all. Its past winners have truly shown us the power of the human spirit. Last year, Matt Hartle was the recipient for the courage he showed in the face of cancer. Tonight, Matt is with us in spirit only. In August, he passed away, but the lessons he taught us will live on. We will not forget Matt Hartle's bravery. The Disney Spirit Award winner from two years ago, Dwight Collins, proved that hearing wasn't a necessity to play Division I college football, and he joins us tonight. And now to present this year's Disney Spirit Award from Disney's Wide World of Sports, Charles Davis. Thank you, Chris, and good evening, everyone. This year, the Spirit Award honors a group of athletes who showed tremendous resolve in the face of adversity and who overcame great obstacles and challenges and epitomized the excellence that is college sports. Most awards are given rewarding athletic prowess on the field of play. While that is true, the Disney Spirit Award also recognizes drive, perseverance, and the commitment to a goal in the midst of great odds. Those are qualities that are not easily measured. This year, the Disney Spirit Award goes to the East Carolina Pirates, and here is their story. Every year, people along the eastern seaboard shudder at the thought of facing another hurricane. But this year, no one from eastern North Carolina, not even in their worst nightmare, could visualize what Mother Nature had in store. Three major hurricanes uh, in, in, in a month's period. Uh, really makes you take a good, strong, hard look at yourself and look in the mirror and see what you're made of. A flood that's been described as a flood of biblical proportions. It was something that went way beyond anyone's wildest imagination. The typical water level in Greenville is about five feet. The flood level is 13 feet, and the water rose 30 feet. They were finding bodies all over the campus where, you know, uh, students and 
you know, maybe people you knew uh, had, didn't make it. After beating South Carolina on the road, the flooding back in Greenville forced the Pirates to spend the entire week in Columbia, preparing for the one home game they had circled on their calendar against Miami. Then the game had to be moved to North Carolina State's home field in Raleigh. To make matters worse, they fell behind 20 to nothing. But the finish is what's etched in the minds of Pirates fans. East Carolina has pulled off one of the biggest upsets in its program's history. Since the game ended, I don't think there was a dry eye in the house, and, and it certainly was true for me. I just uh, realized that I'd seen something pretty miraculous. When you saw people crying after that game, and you saw joy that you've never seen before, because these people had suffered tremendously, and the only thing that they could grasp onto uh, that would provide them with some sort of relief and happiness was East Carolina football. After that euphoric victory, the players found out why those tears flowed so freely, why the emotion overflowed to such an extent. When the team finally returned to Greenville, they saw firsthand the devastation these people were living. I was looking around and I was like, what is that? And somebody said, well, that's the water. I was like, that, that can't be the water. I mean, there's no way. It wasn't just water. It was sewage. Some of the ECU players found out they were living the same nightmare some of their fans were. They say time heals. The healing process has begun, but with 47 people in North Carolina losing their lives and damages in the ballpark of $200 million, the process is a slow one, a process that intertwines the people of this region with the pirates. They're all learning the same lessons of life the hard way. I would hope that they would learn the most valuable lesson, which is perseverance, because I believe that perseverance, uh, aside from all the other characteristics people want to talk about, is the foundation to it. Perseverance and patience, which is nothing more than faith. The true devastation of a flood really isn't learned until the waters recede. Well, the waters in Greenville have receded, and a good indication of the damage is right behind me. Over 100 families are housed in this trailer park after losing their entire homes to the flood. These are some of the people the Pirates played their season for. You got a lot of people that are carpenters, you got a lot of tobacco farmers here, and a lot of, a lot of pig farmers and things like that, but to see them lose everything in their community, and they were rallied around us because of things that they didn't have and the things that, that we brought to them as a, as a football team. Playing football is what you know, people expect us to do, what we've been doing. I think people, you know, they, they look at that as you know, something important, and I feel like you know, if we could keep playing and even keep winning, people felt good about that, and I think it helped the community move forward and give, something, give people something to be happy about. Now, I had a lady come to me, and she, when she looked at me, and she said, I've lost everything, and she looked me right in the eye and said, thank you, and when she did that, I mean, her eyes just welled up in tears, and, and that, was, that was it, and, and yet she was still happy. She said, these are not tears of sadness, these are tears of happiness, and, and when she said that, I think it was, that, that's one thing I'll always remember, one thing I'll always take with me. A win in their bowl game would cap a 10-2 season for East Carolina, a great accomplishment under normal circumstances. But let's just call this a season with a greater purpose. This team probably gave more hope and more uh, realization that there is a tomorrow and the sun will shine tomorrow than uh, anything else could have done for Eastern North Carolina. For you to take an East Carolina football away from those people who suffered during those hurricanes, you would have taken life itself away from them. Most deserving winners, huh? And now joining us from East Carolina University, our head coach Steve Logan, joined by his players Andrew Bays, Forrest Foster, and Jeff Carr. Congratulations, guys. Well done, Jeff Coach, thank you for your strength and your team's strength. I know it's it's hard to put into words the experiences that you guys endured and the inspiration you provided this year. 
Well, it was, it was, it was an experience beyond anything that uh, you learn in coaching school, I assure you that. But, uh, you know, sometimes college football has warts that are not very pretty. But in its inception, college football was put together as a vehicle to bring people together. And uh, I'm, I promise you that happened in eastern North Carolina this year. Jeff, how overwhelming was the reaction of the community to, uh, to your win over Miami and the strength you guys were able to show and the perseverance? It was, just like you say, it was overwhelming because nothing like this has ever been experienced in eastern North Carolina. And there's nothing has ever been experienced for us as a football team to be able to take our team from where we did to beat Miami from being in South Carolina for the uh, whole week. On behalf of all of us, thank you. Congratulations. Good luck in your postseason bowl game. The East Carolina Pilots, recipients of the 1989 Disney Spirit Award. Folks will never forget that night they beat the Miami Hurricanes. Hotel accommodations provided by the Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. Promotional consideration provided by Disney's Wide World of Sports Complex and additional facilities provided by the ESPN Club on Disney's Boardwalk. Also, be sure to catch the Heisman Trophy presentation Saturday on ESPN. Coming up next, Sports Center. Salute to college football 1999. Once again, thank you to the East Carolina Pirates for their inspiration, their mm -hmm. courage in the face of a tragedy. Thanks to Tom Osborne for his enduring excellence, the Home Depot coach of the decade, and all of our winners tonight. Well, first of all, to everybody, the players and all the people who come, college football is the greatest. There's nothing better. Remember, coaches, it's the greatest thrill you'll ever have. Stay in coaching as long as you can. And, <laughs> Kirk, we've been together 23 games this year. Who's the best football teams you've seen? The best football teams. teams yeah. You put me on the spot. Here. <laughs> That's you right. Get, you get, Virginia State State. State. That's it. Good. And you keep talking about how great coaching is, but you, meanwhile, you're sitting in the booth enjoying yourself. If you loved it so much, you'd still be down there on the sideline, right? Well, you know, I knew when it was time to hey, retire. Hey, No. They told, hey, nobody asked me to coach anymore. Right. <laughs> That's the only well, reason I got on coaching. Thank all of our individuals for being such great team guys. Yes, sir. The final words belong to. The wit, the eloquence with Mr. Keith Jackson. We leave you with his words, and thank you for joining us once again tonight from the lane. As we go into the new century, the game of football needs a little tweaking now and then, but it's the work ethic that goes with the game that has always interested me the most. In the game of football, you can experience every emotion that the human body can contain, from the highest kind of joy to the lowest disappointment. But in between, you learn in the game of football to endure, to sustain, to wait, to earn that next moment of joy. But learning to endure will always be one of the most meaningful lessons for anyone. And college football, as much as any place on the face of this earth, provides it.